Okay, speedrunning. Kind of a strange idea to be honest. I mean, instead of enjoying the game and taking your time as you experience all these new things, some people are dedicating their lives to figuring out how to reduce the amount of time they need to play the game by a few seconds. So I guess in this video, we will be discussing how does speedrunning work in Minecraft and could we see something similar happen in Hytale. So speedrunning has been around since the early alpha of Minecraft back in 2009. And I'm clarifying that because I know for a fact that at least one person watching this video believes Minecraft speedrunning only became prevalent because Dream started doing it. And to that, I say you are uncultured. I mean, sure, there may be some correlation according to statistics between the popularity of speedrunning to when Dream started doing it. But I mean, there's also a correlation between the amount of ice cream sold to the amount of murder. So anyways, back in the alpha version, a lot of the content didn't exist, meaning that there was no actual way of completing the game. So instead, these people came up with these extremely arbitrary challenges to speedrunning. For instance, digging to bedrock, entering the nether, or riding a pig? Or I mean, my personal favorite, how quickly you can end a hardcore run. My time was 15 seconds. But when 1.0 came out, everything changed. I mean, the adventure update added a lot of things like the end and the ender dragon. So now there was an official way of completing Minecraft, so to speak. And as more updates came out, the path towards completion became more and more lucrative. But speedrunning Minecraft wasn't like the other girl. Like, no, frick. No, what, what I mean is Minecraft was special. Where before there wasn't only one linear path to completing a game, Minecraft was a constantly changing labyrinth of death with obstacles. Each speedrun was unique and somewhat incomparable, meaning the record never stayed for long. Are you confused? Fine, you know what? Allow me to take several minutes elaborating to harness that sweet, tender watch time. So, each game is categorized into one of two types when it's being speedrun. Either it's a set game or an adaptation game. The difference between these two types is that they each have unique key principles that distinguish them as a game. The way they are being run, as well as the tactics being used when speedrunning them. <gasps> Man, that was a mouthful. Originally, there were only set games you could speedrun. Examples of this are Doom, Skyrim, Super Mario 64, and Breath of the Wild. These games always take place on the same preset map, the same locations, the same point of getting an objective completed, and most of the time, even the same items and enemies being taken on. Let's take Skyrim for instance. The run always begins with you about to get your head chopped off because you crossed the border in an untimely moment. Then instead of playing the game normally, you glitch through the map and then you propel through the air like that penguin and learn to fly. Oh, and then you have to go to Viking Heaven and kill this dragon and then the speed runs over. Considering these set games are more or less always the same path being taken, they are incredibly optimized. What I mean is that speedrunners research and practice an incredible amount of glitches and exploits to get marginally less times. I mean, there are legit some techniques which require near aimbot precision to shave off like 2 seconds. But over time, as people perfect these super precise tricks, speedruns become stagnant. And this either ends or lasts until a whole new strategy is found or someone figures out a new way of to optimize the strategy even more. Okay, and that is more or less what a set game is. Now that you understand that, I want you to completely disregard all of that information I just told you because both the games we are discussing are adaptation games. Why have I spent minutes talking about set games? I don't know, I thought it was interesting. You see, adaptation games are very different from set games. They are almost completely non-linear. I mean, every time you make a new game file, for instance, you generate a random world based off a seed. For your information, there are quintillions of seeds in Minecraft, so your chance of having the same exact run is more or less zero. Sure, I mean, there are set seed categories where speedrunners play a certain seed, but those guys, they don't know anything about Minecraft speedrunning. They are uncultured. Imagine playing on a predetermined map. Couldn't be me! I do want to point out though, although these worlds aren't the same, they aren't entirely different either. I do not want to like necessarily bore you with an entire thesis on world generation, but essentially there are a set amount of rules with how structures are loaded into the map, meaning you will always find certain structures in a certain peripheral. Kuriwei, a renowned speedrunner and YouTuber, has made countless videos simplifying these things for you, so if you are interested, make sure to check that out. But the main thing to keep in mind is that even if you have an obscurely different world from someone else, many of the structures like bastions, fortresses, and even the stronghold will still be found in similar areas or distances from the coordinates 0, 0. Overall, the point I'm trying to make with the adaptation games is that they aren't like that biology exam you had in freshman year where you can memorize 100 flashcards and do well. This is more like that horrendous chemistry class 
class you withdrew from because you had no idea how to memorize a bunch of elements and how somehow if you add sodium to oxygen, it becomes acidic or something. I don't know. I don't remember that well. But in simpler terms, you need to understand the overall formulas and concepts of things and utilize game logic to adapt to the randomized variables. This is overall how Minecraft and Terraria speedrunning has worked. And with all this randomization, records are a lot easier to beat, provided a lot of luck, of course. So with all things considered, is Hytale an adaptation game or a set game? Uh, yes! Okay, I'm not exactly sure, because in reality, Hytale creators like myself base literally all our facts off of a few postcard images we get on a weekly basis. But, I think it's fair to assume a lot of the game is adaptation based due to the fact that it's going to utilize random world generation like Minecraft and Terraria does. However, the game includes a storyline. A key principle of adaptation games is that they, they are arbitrating, meaning there is no linear storyline or quest system to follow. As well as that, theoretically from what we have heard, the main storyline takes place on an island or a continent, meaning there is a limited range of points where things can be. So I'm just going to go back to my initial answer of yes, it's both to a degree. Hytale is also randomly generated into zones, and each zone includes its own biomes with certain key things. This allows runners to memorize a simplified map in their head to locate what they need to. On top of zones, since there is a storyline, I hypothesize that there are key preset locations like Temple of Gaia that are predetermined instead of being randomly generated. This may all sound confusing, but what I mean is that from a broad perspective, the game is very much an adaptation system, but closely, it seems to be somewhere of a set system. I just want to take the quick moment to compare this to Terraria for instance. The main overall world is always randomly generated like in Minecraft based on a seed, right? But some locations that are very important to the storyline can be found in certain areas. For instance, you will always find a dungeon with the flying aimbot skull of Evernearing Doom that will one shot you to the right of spot. Never mind, I was wrong, apparently it could be on the left as well. There are always rules to where certain bosses and structures can be found in the game, but sometimes their exact locations are randomized. which brings us to the next concept we are going to discuss, RNG, aka how much of a lucky bastard you are. RNG stands for Random Number Generator. This is more or less an element that allows for randomized mechanics to be implemented into games. Sure, every game including set games like Breath of the Wild and Skyrim have them, but there is a spectrum of use. For instance, in Skyrim and Breath of the Wild, you will mainly see RNG being used during combat to determine the amount of damage being dealt. In Terraria, it is used for combat, but also for things like the loot that drops from bosses and enemies, while in Minecraft, it is used for a whole array of things, spanning from combat to loot and even more. RNG nonetheless has led to the most controversy regarding speedrunning Minecraft. You see, although skill and game logic are very much involved in achieving a great time, <laughs> luck makes a giant difference. On multiple occasions during a Minecraft speedrun, RNG is very much the sole impact on what time you will get. This is actually what led to popular YouTuber Dream getting in trouble as the multiple lucky occasions he had in one of his speedruns, which led to a 1 in 100 million chance of getting that lucky. Although analyzing the entire speedrun would take a while and isn't what this video is designated to do, Manpat over on Game Theory made a great description of the case. Speedrunning Minecraft literally comes down to rolling a slot machine and hoping for the best results. Of course, this video isn't about criticizing Minecraft speedruns, in fact, this video is more about analyzing how speedrunning has built its own community in Minecraft and if we could see something similar happen in Hytale. As mentioned earlier, the RNG mechanics in Minecraft more or less question whether speedruns can even be measured. I mean, one run is a complete different setting and odds compared to another. And historically speaking, games that are the most optimal for speedrunning require players to have the same chances and odds of getting the same outcome. So is it really fair to measure the same results with different inputs? This ultimately leads me to think that Hytale may not be ideal for speedrunning. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments because of this controversial statement, however considering we have been questioning Minecraft's condition as a speedrunning game on a few RNG mechanics, it's hard to think that Hytale would be speedrunnable on a professional level. You see, similarly to a Terraria, Hytale is dependent on RNG on a series of things. I beg to state that RNG will be very much a bigger component of Hytale mechanics than Minecraft or, Hy or Terraria. With that in mind, odds are that Hytale is even worse of a candidate than Minecraft is for professional speedrunning. But ironically, neither game is made for that exact purpose anyways. 
Even back in the early days of speedrunning Minecraft, did they understand it was a sandbox game, meaning that speedruns were more or less completely arbitrary to traditional ones in other games. This is due to them being adaptation games, and although they can be speedran, it's not their purpose. With that being said, I don't doubt people will speedrun Hytale individually, that may very much be someone's objective, but then again, what is the end goal? To kill a Mazorn perhaps, or burn a Quebec village, or rescue Gaia? I don't know. Look at the speedrunning process in Minecraft. It literally is a process of getting from overworld to the nether to the end, which has been done in under 20 minutes. From what we have comprehended, Haito's a journey through all six zones, on top of perhaps even other dimensions, each dimension including its own bosses and events, odds are that speedrunning Hytale may take hours to do. So instead of perhaps completing the game, perhaps speedrunners will similarly to the early days of Minecraft look to completely arbitrary objectives. Perhaps speedrunning objective will be ride a dragon or kill a boss or even explore all six zones of orbits. This allows for more simplistic goals that can be perfected within a shorter span of time. More categories means more strategies being developed and more competition individually, which leads to a healthier and more diverse speedrunning community. Then again, Haito may not be the perfect game to speedrun, neither was Minecraft. So whether players decide to speedrun the game, that is truly up to them as an individual. If you do try to speedrun the game, you are more likely in for a different experience from what you are used to in Minecraft. But, I mean, if speedrunning isn't for you, you could always just sit back and enjoy a vast world and play through it at your own pace.